Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I just want to very quickly show you how to do this kind of a sandstorm dust wave effect in Phoenix FD with 3ds Max. So I'm going to assume that you're not a complete beginner and I'll just walk you through it because this was my original setup. So I'll just show you the settings. If you are a beginner, be sure to watch some of the older tutorials on the channel, which um, go over the settings in more detail and also if you're new here welcome my name is Jesse I'm a visual effects artist based in Los Angeles and I've been making a lot of these tutorials which you can check out um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of the future tutorials and as always I would appreciate a thumbs up if you guys are enjoying the content so this scene is in units meters and one unit is one meter um, that's important because we want it to be a very large scale sim. So basically, um, if I'm going to just set it up um, from scratch on the side here, I just made a box like this. And then um, basically you would just make it an editable poly. Select the polygon, make it an ID, maybe seven. Then do control I, make it some other number, so maybe 10. And then I would go under helpers, Phoenix, Phoenix source and add the box. And then basically you would just um, set the ID to seven like we did so that the smoke is only coming out of the front polygon. And then for the other settings, what I did was outgoing velocity is 100 meters. I disabled the temperature and smoke is left at one. The standard creation panel here, fire and smoke sim and uh, make a grid. So that's basically the setup here. So I'll just delete that and go over to my original grid. Basically for the grid, it's jammed on Z minus, which is the ground, and it's jammed on Y plus, which is the back wall here. And then the adaptive grid is turned on so that um, as the smoke expands, the grid will expand with it. So it's adaptive by smoke here. And you can set the threshold lower to maybe 0.1. Uh, just to make sure that none of the smoke will be clipped and then for the for the resolution i'm doing 10 million cells to start so 2.7 meters cell size um, which was exactly what i did to get this kind of a result and this could use more resolution i was just trying to show you guys the technique and definitely i would raise the settings higher and then let it sim overnight to get lots of nicer detail so then for the actual settings under dynamics, I'm doing uh, minus one for smoke buoyancy and that's just to keep the dust from rising. So it actually kind of keeps falling. Then for the smoke surface vorticity, I'm doing 0.3. So the vorticity just controls the amount of these plumes and the detail. And then large scale is set all the way up to one because I wanted it to look as large scale as possible. And then for the quality, I'm doing 16 and one step per frame is good enough. And then you can go under helpers, Phoenix, and create a plane force, which is what I have here. And then you would just rotate the plane force in the direction in which you want the dust wave to go. And I set it to just strength 100 meters. And make sure that you, that you check this, apply force behind icon, so that even if the icon is here, it will still affect the smoke all the way back here. Then of course under output just select where to simulate this into and under rendering basically what I did for the smoke opacity I did 0.5 for opacity and for the smoke color I just changed it to constant and gave it this dusty um, color here and then of course you could just create a camera and put it in place and simulate it through I already did a little bit of it and then you can just create a V-Ray light under, you know, lights, V-Ray light, and you can go under rendering environment and enable the V-Ray exposure control. And then one other thing that's important is the speed, um, because even though it looks large scale and I'm happy with the way it looks, um, by default, it was moving way too fast. So this is actually slowed down um, by a factor of two. Um, so I actually just slowed it down in After Effects um, you might think, well, why don't I just simulate it with the time scale lowered to 0.5? I have tried that and it will actually give you something that looks completely different. 
So if you have a result that you like, like I do, and you just want to slow it down, changing the time scale will not achieve that because changing the time scale will uh, just give you different looking results. So the only way to do an actual slow motion is to go under output here and make sure that you export the velocity and then you would go under re-simulation and say enable and say okay and then use time bend controls just enable that which means that um, Phoenix now knows that you're going to want to re-simulate this again at a, at a slower pace basically so you would then go under input and this input is basically a continuation of this time bend control so you can see it says time bend controls up here just like it does here so after you enable that these settings will be taking effect so you could just say play speed um, 0.5 and then you would um, go back to simulation and hit start again so the workflow is you simulate it first as a regular sim and then you enable re-simulation and the original cache will disappear just like it disappeared now. You select the folder where you want to um, simulate the, these new slowed down files into and then you hit start again. And uh, it will run the simulation again um, and it will basically slow it down for you and retain all of the details. So that's something you can do, uh, but I just slowed it down in After Effects for, for time's sake. Just to show you basically what I did for the thumbnail, I wanted to put it into a real environment um, like this. Um, so basically I went to a website called HDRI Haven. I'm going to link to it in the description. And then you would just go under composition, new composition, make it 1280 by 720 or whatever the resolution of your sandstorm is. And then I have this 4K um, HDRI map that I got from HDRI Haven. I just put it in place like this, uh, maybe scale it up a little bit. And then you can just put your sandstorm render on top of it, maybe rotate it a little bit. Then I need to stretch it, like I said, so make it twice as long, enable frame blending. And then you can go a few frames forward just to see what it looks like. And then I would go under effect, color correction, hue and saturation, maybe desaturate it a little bit and then go effect color correction curves and maybe brighten it up and then basically we need to roto this side hill so i would just copy the background put it on top make a mask and just make a mask around this hill like that and then maybe around this stone here like this and then um we need to invert the mask, so hit M and invert. And maybe you can hit F and give it like two pixels of feather. You can see that the dust wave is basically behind the hill and then it's approaching. So I would just animate, um, I would animate the mask to make it look like it's coming over the hill. So that's something you can play with, but I basically set it up um, just for that one frame, um, just, just for the thumbnail. And you can see that I have a little bit of a shadow under the dust wave so basically you can either render a shadow pass from max um but i wanted to do it as quickly as possible so i just copied this um, sandstorm layer go under effects and do drop shadow and then you can go here and select shadow only so what you get is just this um sort of black thing and you can put that under the original sandstorm and then just create a mask so that the shadow is only on the bottom and you can you can barely see it but it is there it gives you a little bit of a shadow just to make it look like it's living in that environment so super simple tutorial just wanted to show you you know m the technique of make this large scale smoke and you guys can take it from here for your own shots and whatever else you need to do super simple thanks again very much for watching I uh, hope you found it helpful and I'll talk to you later.